Well, as we follow the illegal sex trafficking and trafficking of illegals across the United States being paid for by you, the taxpayers, what about the foster care system? Well, our next guest, Anthony Rubin from muckraker.com, has uncovered an illegal network of trafficking paid for millions of dollars by you, the taxpayers, funneling illegal immigrants and sex trafficking through the foster care system in the United States. Uh, this story is mind-blowing. And Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on again. I appreciate it. So just set the stage here. What is happening? Sure. So basically what uh, we found, what we uncovered um, were basically government contractors uh, who are moving kids across the country and delivering them to foster homes. More specifically, uh, we actually did a stakeout at LaGuardia Airport. And, you know, we would just wait for flights to come in from Texas. And then every day you'll see this happening. You'll just see groups coming in with with kids. I don't know, four, five, six, seven kids, somewhere around there. Um, some very young, some, you know, older minors, maybe 16 or 17, the ages vary. Uh, they load them up into black vans and they deliver them to different homes across the state of New York. And, you know, we actually followed some of these vans and uh, saw the places that they're being dropped off at and then did research on research on these different places. And, um, you know, you see that there are these places are facing uh, you know, ongoing cases, a serious sexual assault uh, charges being levied against them. And they're also receiving, at the same time, tens of millions of dollars in federal funding. And so we expose all that in the video and, of course, confront the people that are delivering the kids. What do they say to you when you confronted them? Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's always the most shady possible response that you can imagine. You know, let's say if I was doing that, which I would never be doing that. But if for some reason I was doing that and somebody was putting a camera in my face, I would at least be like, hey, listen, you know, I can't talk to you, but here's what I work for. Go talk to my manager. But I can assure you that, you know, I have nothing to do with, you know, any harm that to these kids. Right. We're, we're moving them. They're going to be safe. Somewhere. But you don't get any of that. Get the camera out of my face. You don't have my permission to film. They hide their name badge. You know, they they take the camera and shove it away, like you'll see in the video. It's those types of responses, which, and you, you'll you'll see they look very nervous a lot of the times, extremely nervous. And um, you know, to me, that it's just an indicator that they know that something is not right. Let's play a few seconds here of some of this investigation when you confront these individuals. Take a look. What's going on, brother? Hey, no. Do that first. Yeah, don't touch me. Get the fuck out of here. Don't touch me, dude. Get, get, can you go? Don't touch me. Can you go? You're, you're asked to leave. Don't touch me, no, dude. Not. Nobody's touching you. All right. Go. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Goodbye. Don't get in my face. Goodbye. Goodbye. Why Goodbye. are you getting in my face? Goodbye. Why are you getting in my Goodbye, face? Goodbye, bro. Goodbye. Why are you, you getting in my face? To do here. Goodbye, bro. What's the name of this place? None of your business. Goodbye. Have a blessed day, bro. I'll have a blessed day. That's so fine. Here looking for problems is not good. I don't want any problems. The so Children's Village. Business. What is this place? Like I'm acting. I'm. I'm asking you. Where. Day. Where are these kids going? Have a blessed day. Where are these kids going? Have a blessed day, bro. Where are these kids going? Have a blessed day, bro. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> they're not very excited to see you. And do we know who they're working for? I mean, they're covering name badges. Do we know? You said they're being picked up at the airport and being transported. Who, what agency is doing this? Are they working for the foster homes themselves? No. So I know the agencies that do this. I can't speak, but you know, specifically to what agency those people in the video might have worked for, but the big names are Southwest Key and MVM names that I know you're familiar with at this point. Um, these are, you know, contractors that are receiving hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funding. And, you know, uh, we actually witnessed a couple of things. So we witnessed them taking these kids and loading them onto black vans and then, you know, delivering, delivering them to foster homes. But what we also saw was uh, handoffs of these kids to so-called sponsors right there at baggage claim, which people have talked about that happening before, but nobody's actually ever caught that in video. We caught that in video. There's a little clip in there that people will see. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's what you see happening at, you know, major international airports like LaGuardia or JFK. Well, we know this is happening at Denver International Airport. I witnessed it myself. I didn't actually see a handoff of any individuals, but the signage is all around the baggage claim there, of course. And uh, and, you know, they're they're making they're they're putting those signs there saying, be aware of child trafficking, et cetera, et cetera. But they're allowing it to happen. I mean, it's all right on camera. 
I mean, imagine if I was to drive up there with explosives, they'd be all over me in a second. But they know exactly that these kids are being ferreted through these airports. I mean, it's being ha- it's happening on the government's watch, is it not? 100%. 100%. I mean, the contractors that are delivering them are funded by federal taxpayer dollars and then as are the foster homes that they're being delivered to, you know? As are, you know, the border patrol agents who are essentially escorting these people, these kids, these trafficked kids across the border into the United States. The entire thing is funded by uh, U.S. taxpayers. And, you know, actually airport personnel, maybe the the higher ups might have an understanding of what's going on. Uh, The low level people, I'm not even sure that they realize what's happening. Like the people who just work in baggage claim, I genuinely am not sure that they realize um, that, you know, a lot of times they're witnessing trafficked kids that are coming through that might be handed off to a sex predator right there at baggage game. I'm not sure that they know, to be totally honest with you. I mean, I would love to hear, I mean, if, if there's anybody that works, I know we have, when every time I go to the airport, I see a lot of viewers. So, and folks that work in TSA and others who, who will say hi to us here and they, they're on the level, they're on the level. So if and any of you are watching right now, you work in baggage claim at any of these international airports in the United States, any of the major airports, Drop me an email, drop Anthony an email. I would love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear what you're being told internally at the airport. You know, look away, not pay attention to this. Because if I, I don't know, and Anthony, if you and I worked at the airport, like I'm a pretty observant person. I think you are too. And I, you know, there's a lot of downtime at the airport. You're just sitting there chewing on a pen while you're waiting for the next flights to come in. You're going to see what's going on. You're going to be aware that these children are being handed off to individuals that they didn't come with. You're going to notice all of this happening. I can't imagine that you wouldn't be aware of this. Yeah, you know, I, I feel the, the same way. But, you know, for example, I talked to, um, you know, the, these, I guess, quote unquote, it's not really a, a big crime, but, you know, these, these quote unquote illegal or I guess unlicensed taxi drivers that hang out there in baggage claim, right? And they try to get people to come and drive them in their unlicensed uh, taxis. And, you know, I was talking to these guys and they, I mean, these are people that are not working at the airport, right? So they have no reason to try to cover up something. And they told me that they see kids coming through. I described to them what I'm looking for because I was, you know, when I first got there, I wasn't sure if I was going to see what I was looking for, but I described what I was looking for. Kids wearing backpacks, all the same shoes. And they're like, oh yeah, we see that every day. And they were asking me, like, what is that? Like, we don't really know what we're looking at. We see it happening all the time, but we're not really too sure what it is. And so, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if you have airport personnel that don't know what's going on, because unless you understand what you're looking at, it could be happening right under your nose. You just won't have a clue. I mean, and I like to be on your side on this. You know, I really hope that it's just naivete. They just don't know, right? I, not it. This is a, such a shocking subject for most people. And I think people compartmentalize. This can't be happening in front of me, right? This can't, children can't be sex trafficked right here in front of me. I'm going on my lunch break. You know, really? Is that happening? So I, I, I'm on with you on that. I hope that it's just naivete and they're just not uh, made aware of it. Let's talk about these foster homes, though, Anthony. I mean, how do you, first of all, how do you, I don't know if you know this, but how do you open a foster home? Like, how do you get accreditation to become a foster home and a, and a destination? Where these, where the government then, or these groups, these private contractors would be ferreting these children to? Don't you have to pass some sort of rigorous regulations with the government in order to be open in the first place? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what that process is like. But what I will say is, if I was a person who, you know, was simply driven by capital and didn't really have any morals behind it, um, it would be my. It's my assumption that it's probably a very lucrative uh business to get one of these contracts and be hosting these kids at the foster home i mean i can only, i don't know what the profit margins are uh but i can only imagine that it's got to be pretty lucrative and the reason why i'm saying that is you know i'm comparing that to for example uh the cost per head at some of these illegal alien hotels as we talked about last time you know where it's costing like five to eight hundred dollars a night per head right at these hotels so i can only imagine the kind of profit margins that are being made off of these trafficked kids and so you know uh, you could only imagine that people must be dying. These these foster homeowners must be dying to get these contracts. I mean, it's unbelievable. And so they're just dropping these kids off. What about the accountability? You followed these vans. You followed them dropping them off. Is there any sort of follow-up, check-in, find out how these children are doing? Um, and, and do we know where they're coming from? They're just coming from any country, 43 different countries around the world, being brought in paid for flights right into the United States and then taxi driven in these vans right to a foster home. It's fully orchestrated. It's just mind blowing to me. 
Right. Well, we do know that for the kids that are dropped off at sponsors, you know, parent or guardian or child trafficker or sex trafficker, that there is a uh, 30 day quote unquote wellness check, right? Where they just dial a number, the number of the so-called sponsor and they see if they pick up. And then, you know, that's where that one, the, the 85,000 number comes from because 85,000 of those phone calls have gone unanswered. But as far as these foster homes go, I'm not sure what the checkup process is there, if at all. But what I will say is this, um, back in 2018, we include this statistic in the video. Back in 2018, it was a bombshell report that came out that disclosed that between 2000 and 2018, uh, 114,000 missing person cases, and they were all foster children. So 114,000 missing foster children just had their cases closed without the children ever being found. 114,000 over the course of 18 years. That's 17 foster kids per day just going missing. You don't know what's happening to them. You can even believe that. It's kind of like, right? Like it's, it's kind of unfathomable. No, get them off the books, right? Close the cases, get them off the books so we can not have a list of missing children throughout the United States. It's it's unbelievable. Right. It's unbelievable. Right. A, um, and this continues right under our noses every day through these international airports in the United States. And of course, this on the heels of the story we brought you last week from the Daily Mail, the big Daily Mail uh, bombshell report about the hundreds of thousands of illegals being flown in on direct flights um, and right into the United States right under the watchful eye of uh, of the Biden administration. Um, have, has the Biden administration uh, commented on this story at all? Any of these foster children being ferreted around to different locations? I think you already know the answer to that. Absolutely not. But, you know, waiting for a comment. Maybe we'll get one. We'll see. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't come up during the State of the Union address. Um, it says, you know. Biden, President Biden really is concerned about the state of the United States right now. Well, someone who is, is Anthony Rubin and the team over at Muckraker who are doing just fantastic work in the dark of night following these uh, these vans um, and uh, confronting these individuals. So thank you so much for this reporting. And uh, again, we'll link it up here in the description uh, of this show so people can go check out the full report, watch the full video and also the, the write up on it as well. Anthony, great to see you. Thank you so much for having me on again, Clayton. I appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.